Hello. This time, a new gizmo for my trusted DHS 720A. It's my preferred oscilloscope for everything that has to do with power and high voltage. The good thing on this is not because it is tektronics, but it is completely isolated. Two isolated uh, inputs, oscilloscope inputs and a multimeter input. All three inputs are isolated independently. It's a great thing. Uh, some time ago I made a video on how to upgrade it, update it, the backlight, because the CCFL tube dies, and of course it was dead when I get it, got it. I designed a LED controller, backlight LED controller, a drop-in, one-to-one -one drop in. This is in another video. If you're interested, you can check it. And normally it comes with an uh, additionally additional charger, external charger for the batteries. Mine, of course, didn't come with that. So I designed this one. I want to show you how to do it. The first thing, the first solution is a friend of mine designed or printed the 3D printed the case with my specification. This is one option. Second option is to use such a case, factory made, use it like that. The bottom is the top to drill it. And instead of the tube I have here, to use something like this. This is a um, holder for a C-cell battery from Bulgin. It's not the cheapest one, but you can use it and screw it like that. It has the same dimension as the battery. It, uh, you have to fill a little bit here with this, this contact to be used for the plus contact of the battery. So there are two possibilities. To be honest, I would like this one, but I don't know. It depends which material you, you take on the price. So, let's see how we do it. Preparing to use my stencil for the DH700 charger, Tektronix charger, DH700 series oscilloscopes, isolated oscilloscopes. It's the second time uh, I use a stencil. So let's see what happens. Let's see what we did. Mm, it looks good. Looks okay. Probably I will have some shorts but it looks okay in general a lot of soldering paste as I so as I said it's just the second time that I use a stencil to solder SMD normally I solder everything by hand but this time for fun I wanted to use a stencil so. Everything populated. Yeah, not perfect, but I think I will have to rework a few of them. But for now it looks okay. Oh, that's very flow. Well, doesn't look like that bad. Few of them are reflowed nice. Most of them are reflowed nice. A few I have to retouch. But all in all, it was much faster than doing it by hand. As I mentioned before, I am using a dedicated controller chip here, the 10 pin chip from an Asian, Asian manufacturer. It is made for the Asian market. Uh, 
things that made for the Asian market are very specific and you have a lot of features that uh, you don't find in um, chips from other big manufacturers like linear technology that is now Texas Instruments or analog devices or whatever and of course they're much cheaper here you can see the screened the shield that the doctor I'm using wouldn't be necessary but I liked it more anyway uh, the chip can take uh, 2.6 to 6 volt I think input voltage it boosts up the voltage as needed um, it's, it is programmable we have through a resistor for the current and the voltage of the battery pack here it is for nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium batteries in series I designed the board like that to you so you can use a 5 volt wall mart I think it's called power supply I'm using one with 5 amp, uh, 5 volt and 2 amps this is what it's used at the moment uh, but uh, you can use a 12 volt one too then this bridge must be removed and instead here you can see the space for a DC DC converter it is I don't know it's called in AliExpress and eBay you get them you see them everywhere 360 something mini 360 or something yeah it can give up to 3 amps it's a very small footprint anyway this is used so you can I, I use this one so you to, to step down from 12 to 5 volt additionally I put some filtering ferret bead and a ceramic capacitor and an over voltage protection to not exceed the 5 or 6 volts so just finished the testing of the my third party THS 700 series oscilloscope external charger I used a standalone micro a standalone charger controller from a Asian company it has everything that I need nickel cadmium nickel metal hydride uh, certified it has short circuit protection undercharging overcharging everything the only the only bad thing it has it is the status it just has on and off so charging and charged that's a little bit not enough for me so I spend it an 80 tiny 85 microcontroller that handles the status signaling from that I derive four statuses first one green blinking means no battery inserted blue charging green charged and red either short circuit or absolutely bad battery with very low impedance inside my design has a short circuit protection um, polarity protection over voltage protection so almost everything this is how it looks on the back uh, the mechanics of course were the biggest problem this is my first prototype A friend of mine made a nice case for that uh, 3d printed yeah this is the tube where you put the battery looks like that this is the case itself the bottom part it sits like that it's of course screwed and this is the top part this is the most expensive part of all I checked on PCB way and GLC PCB it, and it gets quite expensive if you make it. This is how it looks closed. It's rather nice. Here you open it. And this is how it looks with the battery inserted. Of course it has to be screwed down. I just uploaded the firmware 
the AT Tiny. So you can see if nothing is inserted, you have a blinking, 2-3 Hz. Battery gets inserted. Blue, charge. You see it's charged and it shows that it is it for a moment it goes to charging the blue and then it goes to charged already. Let's take another one. I don't know if I have one that is needs a little bit charging. And this is charged too. This one. Okay. This means charging. And then I have a dead battery. This one is completely short circuit. It protects completely the battery and the charger itself. This chip is very nice. As I said, the only thing, is, the only problem is the status indication. But this has been sold with an 80 tiny 85. Yeah, that's it. If anybody wants, I have the STL files and of course the Gerbers. Cheers! Oh yeah, I'm using just a very simple Arduino as an ISP in circuit programmer to program the 80 tiny through this SPI port. Bye.